All right. I need to be honest. This is the third time I tried making this video. A lot has happened over the past couple days with this plugin. For those of you that don't know, Kyle Beats is a phenomenal YouTuber and beat maker producer. The guy's just incredible. He crushes everything he touches. And Kyle and a company called Two Clicks Audio created a plugin called Sandbox. This is a synthesizer. They dropped it out on Black Friday and there was a lot of hype around this plugin. Kyle Beats has already made another plugin with this company called Drip and that was wildly successful. I see those ads everywhere I go, but I don't think they knew what they were expecting when it came to this synth. A lot has been happening over the past couple days. So the first time I tried to make this video, I was a little hesitant. I was kind of pumped to see a new plugin come out and it sounded pretty cool from what Kyle was talking about. So I ended up going onto the website to download the plugin and I couldn't see a price point yet. I had to enter my email address so that way they could send me a download link to the plugin. Then I could see the price and it was only $10 a month. Yeah, it is all subscription based. It has to be under a subscription plan. Now, usually I'm not against plugin subscriptions. I really like the idea of them in a lot of cases, but I just don't think the value was there for this plugin yet. But reluctantly, I entered my credit card information and I gave them $10 so that way I could have access to this plugin. Now the installation process was actually really simple. I just clicked the link in the email and downloaded the plugin. All 4.3 gigabytes worth of the plugin. Damn. This plugin is absolutely massive, which kind of shows me that it's more or less a sampler than it is anything else. And they're definitely trying to show off what it can do similar to like Omnisphere. So with the 8,000 plus presets you get with this plugin, it makes sense why there'd be a lot of samples involved with it. So that really wasn't the end of the world to me. Just a big plugin, big package. I'm okay with it. So then I get it loaded into the DAW. Now I have to enter my email address again inside the plugin, which makes sense because if you quit paying for for the plugin, you're going to lose access to the synthesizer. And instead of them doing it through something like iLock, it makes sense why you just have to sign into the plugin. So my expectations were pretty low at this point. And then I started playing with it. It actually sounded really good. when I stopped making the first video and basically started making a second video because the plugin actually sounded great. I was making great beats pretty quickly with it and it was really simple. I really, really enjoyed the plugin and I liked the presets they had. There wasn't a single preset that sounded like a filler preset. You know, those presets in every single synth out there, which just feels like it was a filler. They just added it just so that way they could add it. And this felt like every single preset was actually made for the type of music that Kyle creates. And I think it worked out really well. So that's when I clicked X on my DAW. And when I reopened the DAW, I realized that it completely forgot what preset I used. And with over 8,000 presets in this synth, you think I would be able to find the one that I used to create the beat? It had just randomly selected a different preset for no reason whatsoever. Now that was frustrating, but I thought, well, maybe if I just render it out to audio inside the DAW, then I will be fine until they get this fixed. But it's even worse than that. If you have the synth opened and then you click X on it and then you try to open it again, it will completely forget where it is in the preset realm. So if you're cycling through presets, you basically got to start back at the beginning. It's super, super buggy and super frustrating. And this isn't the only bug that I've heard. A lot of other people have been saying that they've been having bugs like it doesn't even play sometimes when you press keys. It just kind of just stops playing in general. And then somebody had left a comment under one of the shorts that I created about this plugin and said that it was a CPU hog. So that's when I went and took a deep dive into just how much CPU this plugin is actually using. It is killing my CPU. Now I have a pretty decent spec'd out computer and it is still using almost 50% of my CPU. And this beat is actually a really small beat. There's not a lot of tracks to it at all, but it is using a ton of processing power. Now, just with the preset problem alone, it is basically unusable to me at this point in time. I really like the way it sounds, which is a big bummer, but I can't just close a plugin and then reopen it and lose everything that I have. That's just a bummer. And I really wish that I'd be able to use this plugin, but I thought, well, they're gonna start working on some fixes. Kyle did say that there will be future updates, but he wasn't very clear about it, whether that was new presets or new features, but I'm kind of hoping they are bug fixes. And so then that's when I got an email basically saying that they have stripped this from the market and it is no longer being sold to people. Now we can be a part of the beta program if we want to. And I'm really considering it because I actually like the way this plugin sounds and I think there's some serious potential for it. At this point in time, they're just pretending like none of this existed. I even went to Kyle 
Kyle Beats YouTube channel and he just completely deleted the video where he was showing off the plugin. So needless to say, I'm not the only one having issues with this. It seems like a lot of people are having problems. But I don't want this video to be all doom and gloom because honestly, I think what Kyle's doing is really, really great. And I think the plugin sounded fantastic. It's like they took all of the developmental power that they had and put it into the way the plugin sounded and then just kind of pushed everything off to the side. And to be fair, I kind of can respect that in a way because I really like the way the plugin sounded. I've seen a couple of videos on YouTube where they're saying that it's impossible to make a beat with this plugin. I just don't think they're using it at all. I think they're trying to find something wrong with it. There's plenty of other things wrong with it than the way it sounds. I really like the way it sounded and I really like the fact that you could randomize a preset and there was also an option to randomize chord scales so that way you can play chords with just one finger. There's a lot I liked about this plugin, but I just don't think that they were quite ready to release it on Black Friday. And speaking of Black Friday, if you wanna know how Black Friday plugin deals can destroy your mixes, then you're gonna wanna click on this video right here. In that video, I tell you exactly why Black Friday plugin deals are ruining your mixes and the three steps I like to follow before I purchase any new plugin or piece of gear at all. Now click on that video and I'll see you over there. Now as always, go create.